You're welcome to the Policy Council. My name is Okwemi Agbaje. On this edition, we look at the healthcare sector in Lagos State. Um, we know that healthcare is now a national problem. People, our people go to India, they go to Egypt, they go to Germany, they go everywhere else but Nigeria to take care of their health. But only the rich can do that, or at least the middle class. What is government planning for the poor? and for the vulnerable. I have the commissioner in Lagos State responsible for health to discuss this with me. Enjoy the program. You welcome back to the Policy Council. Um, today my guest is the Honorable Commissioner for Health in Lagos State, Dr. Olajide Idris. He, he, he personifies the sector. He was the former permanent secretary in the same ministry, and together we will review the state of health care, health care services, and the sector in Lagos State. Dr. Idris, you welcome to the policy. Thank council. you very much. Okay, let, let's start with an overview of your, your policy trust. What's the mandate of, of the Ministry of Health in Lagos State? Well, basically, and simply put, um, the mandate is basically to protect, mm. maintain, and restore the health of the people of Lagos State. Mm. And to facilitate uh, unfettered access of these people to health services, irrespective, without any barriers whatsoever. And mm. again, barriers have many dimensions. Mm. Could have physical barrier, could be financial, could mm. be cultural, mm. could be anything. So mm. uh, the idea is that uh, we have to provide this service to these people, bring in mind all these challenges, all these things. So if the guy doesn't have money, you will be still attend to him. That's the, that, in fact, that is one of the major goals of the health sector. Mm. Uh, one is uh, get the proper health industry, improve the health status, uh, improve, the, improve um, the response of the system to the people. Mm. And, more, and more importantly, we provide the financial protection to the poor mm. because they are, member, they are members of, the, of, of, this, of, the, of this society too. Okay. Um, let, let's, I mean, I've been looking at the, the figures in terms of budgetary allocations but in the Lagos State government, yeah. uh, and 2013, I see 42 billion significant resources, uh, almost 9 percent of the budget allocations. Definitely, uh, and and that and that's the average. And the last few years, the percentage allocation to health has been over 8.8 .8 in 2011, 8.2 in 2012, 8.6 in 2013. So, so there's significant resources. How have these resources been applied? What well, what are the Main programs and 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 activities that that are going. Well, well basically, um, we, I will go back a bit to when we came in. Yes. Even, even the previous addresses, I was part of it. And yes. We looked at the system. There were mm. so many things wrong with the system, mm. and we st set embarked on a reform process mm. as far back as 2004. And then for that reform process, we had our strategies. And in this administration, we maintained a strategy with some slight modification because. It's like you've created a plan, you've charted a course. You must be able to maintain that course. So, so basically, our strategies are numerous. One is to address the issue of infrastructure. Okay. Just like in any other infrastructure refers to the hospitals, the clinics, the primary health care centers, um, schools of nursing, school of medicine, and all. And sec the second one has to do with addressing the issue of a human resource for health. And we have a challenge in this environment, especially in Lagos State. Mm. If you look at the population of Nigeria and look at the population of Lagos State, you might say we have quite the largest number of health, work, health personnel. But the fact, in reality, is that if you compare that to the population of people we need to deal with. So if you look at it per capita, per capita it's with totally inadequate. So mm. it's a major issue. That's, that's number. And again, we had to address the issue of the skill mix, mm. the quality of care and that kind of so, that's another strategy. The third one was has to do with financing the health sector itself. Mm. Um, healthcare finance is basically generating resources for the sector. There is no country in this world mm. that does not take that particular function very seriously. There is no country. So, and over the years, financing in the sector in Lagos has been solely based on budget provisions. Mm. And we also feel that it's not totally inadequate. inadequate. What say. So that's one. The fourth one was to address the issue of the primary healthcare system. Mm. We needed to revitalize that system because over the years that has has not been attended to mm. over the years. And primary healthcare being the bedrock of any healthcare system, if we do not address that, 
whatever we, we do at the second and third year is just be a waste of time. Mm. And, and the fifth one was to some kind of regulation. And because you, you have to regulate whether players are in the sector, mm. be it doctors, be it um, um, private hospitals, tra private hospitals, nurses, even the manufacturers, etc. There must mm. be some form of regulation. Yeah. And again, this state we have a, pop I mean, about 55 percent of the population being catered by the private uh, providers. Mm. And over the years, it had remained unregulated, and so we needed to put some form of regulation. We also, address some issue of uh, quackery and all sorts of things. So that's one. The sixth one was because of a huge population, the level of poverty, the level of education, we felt, and again, the positive resources available to us. And they say prevention is better than cure. Yeah. So we had this issue of health care health prevention and health promotion. So mm. those are basic things. Those and the, the last bit is okay, you need to mobilize the people. Get the people involved, that's why people are the grassroots, we need to cater. So those are the basic strategies we adopted in the health sector. Okay. Now, let's take a short time out and then we'll break this down and look at the primary healthcare sector, the secondary healthcare sector, and the tertiary sector. We'll be right back. You welcome back to the Policy Council. I still have the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Lajide Idris. So, you, so let's let's break it down now. Let's look at the primary healthcare sector. Like you said, it's the most it's important the stage. Of, so, in specific terms, what have we been doing? Like, well, over the years, the infrastructure had been drawn down, mm -hmm. and again, the mindset that people had always ascribed this system to the local government areas as mm -hmm. their major function, but. This admission felt that we could not allow this to go on. More so the amount of investment we put on the other sectors. If we don't address that sector, we'll be wasting our time. So we decided to fully address the sector. And looking at the challenges facing it, one has to do with the infrastructure. Mm. A major problem is actually staffing those facilities because mm. a lot of them are like of about two or three years back you had about one well, about one two hundred and seventy seven primary health care centers all function in different states of functionality. Very few function in 24 hours. A lot of them let eight hours a day. I'm totally inadequate for that kind of thing. And then what we decided to do was address the issue of infrastructure. And we looked at it, look at the resources. We felt, look, you could not develop everything in one in first. One, yeah. And what we decided to do was, okay, earmark a primary health care center in each local government area. We structure it staff it adequately with both material resources and human resources so that it can function 24 hours. We said we do that in each of local government. It's a way to stimulate this thing so that the local government council can now take us this well, what, What's the ideal staffing of a primary health care? That is, each of those flagships must have a three doctors to cover the shifts, yeah. about eight nurses to cover the shift, I have the appropriate number of uh, pharmacies, laboratory technologies, and all sorts of so. okay. But again, to do this, Requires a lot of money, so we said we will face them. Okay. So that is what we are doing now. Okay, the secondary sector, I imagine from, from what I saw on your website, that must be consuming a lot of resources. Oh, definitely. Mm. But it is now we have about 24 uh, secondary care facilities in the state. That's and the again, general hospitals. The ge general hospitals. What we try to do is at least do phase refurbishment to build up the capacity in area where they have shortage of staff, employ more staff. But more importantly now, raise the percentage, provide the wherewithal for the doctors and nurses to work with the right equipment, mm -hmm. the right environment. But again, a lot of those facilities were built over the years. And mm -hmm. so the culture of maintenance too, we had, we had to put there. So it's a, it's a gradual thing. And again, to add to it, so for instance, in the context of the MDGs, mm -hmm. there are some hospitals that did not provide maternal and child health services. And that's why at that level two, we decided to build the maternal and child centers yes. to complement the services as one and two, to address the issue of MDGs as a referral point to the primary health care facility. So mm. we are doing that. Yeah. At tertiary level, with the teaching hospital, you know what we are. I mean, that, that's, that's been a huge investment. Well, it's a huge investment because if you look, if you say Lagos is a center of excellence, mm. we have operated a population of 20, over 20 million people. Mm. Of course, that the population deserves more than one uh, tertiary center. If we were to compare with other countries, I mean, Luz is there, that's mm -hmm. right. But again, the seven, like, and, yeah. and again, we had to spend a lot of money to bridge the capability of that facility. One, I mean, for many things. One, to provide 
an environment through which we could attract back those Nigerians in diaspora yeah. to, to provide a platform to train the needed manpower, especially the specialist manpower in that kind of thing. Of course, because the fourth function of a teaching hospital is research yeah. and to, uh, to generate uh, research capabilities. Capability. So, and that's why we went long hog to refurbish that whole facility. Mm. And again, mind you, that facility was not purpose built for a tertiary institution. It first started at the cottage of institution, yes. became a general hospital, and so it also has its challenges. But again, we have to make do with what we have, and that's the essence of that. And at our apex, we wrote the Ike House there too. That mm -hmm. that will be the apex, apex level for obstetrics and gynecological services, and this is also also undergoing refurbishment. Mm. I, I wonder, is there any room? All of these are huge investments, and and you, the state government is making it. But like you said, is there room for? What, what's the what's your policy in relation to public private partnerships? Over the years, if you look at the system, the healthcare system involves everybody, not only public hospitals mm -hmm. and private facility, private provider. And the peculiarity of Lagos State is that the private practitioners provide services to over 55 percent of the population. So mm -hmm. that's a huge resource to them, especially in the context of the shortage of manpower. So we have no choice, choice. but to partner with the private sector. Mm -hmm. So one thing we did was we started directly with them. But again, we also need to regulate the assignment because there's also a lot of quackery. Yes. And that is where we, 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 we I mean, it's a conscious policy of government. But again, in the last couple of years, too, we've also experimented, not only in service provision now, we've experimented in some areas, especially non clinical services. Mm -hmm. If you go to Ikeja, the mutual in Ikeja there is privately run. Hmm. It's a PPP arrangement. Okay. It's simply much in Bagada. Okay. And also, we've got we also extended for that now. There are some other services like scams, mm. um, histopathological services that are also, also being provided by the private sector. Okay. Um, we've gone further. If you look at a facility, the, the diagnosis center, Bola Tidum Diagnosis Center, government mm -hmm. built, financed building and equipment, but it's a private person that is running because they are bringing the expertise, they are really capacity to run. So we are exploring those arrangements. Okay. We are building the Kadak Arana Center at Bagada now. It's, up, in fact, it's almost complete, it will soon be commissioned. The element is that we are bringing a, a private group with the correct expertise to run it mm -hmm. over a period and at the same time provide the capacity to impart knowledge and that kind of to our people. Okay. So it's a conscious it's effort a to explore. And we are looking to provision our I mean, partner with private sector, even with the service provision at the primary care level, secondary care level, at the tertiary level, even on clinical services, but we have no choice but to go that route. Hmm. Okay, let's take another time out. Um, I'm talking to Dr. Olajide Idris, Lagos State Commissioner for Health. We'll be right back. Government wants our city to become a mega modern city. And so, government is providing modern markets for us to carry out our business. Now, this requires money. So, we need to pay our taxes to help government to help us. I pay my taxes. I hope you've paid yours. I pay. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. you welcome back. It's the Policy Council. I'm Okwame Agbaje and my guest is Dr. Olaji Deidres. And we're talking about the healthcare sector in Lagos State. Let, let me take some feedback questions. Um, in preparing for this, my crew asked me to ask you a question. According to them, there's a practice in which general hospitals sometimes tell patients to come back in two months' time. Someone who has some serious illness. Often, and, and of course we know the the consequences of that, two months time, the disease may have progressed irretrievably. What does that happen? And why would that happen? Um, I would say it is totally correct. Mm. But again, let me say again that I did tell you that there is a huge pressure mm. on our hospital the facilities. Level. Whether you like it or the fact is that a lot of people are moving from the private sector into the public sector mm. for many reasons. Mm. And because, like I did tell you, if the private care facilities were functioning well, don't be that low. So, our doctors are overwhelmed. Hmm. There's no doubt about that. And so, I do also know in the Kedja too, with that facility, we have shortage of theater spaces. Hmm. So, the tendency is that you have to book patients, and again, you have to take the most critical first. Yeah. Now, 
That's right. But I'm not ruling out the fact that we, in any organization you have people with wrong attitude mm -hmm. and sharp practice. So right. that's right. So we've had instances of people to, I mean, some doctors diverting patients to their facility. But by and large, the major problem has to do with the huge number of people they have to deal with. And mm -hmm. everybody wants wants to be treated as a well, even when you are serious, when you are not serious. To, 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 the, to the person, his or her problem is serious. But the most to the doctor, you have to be said which one is an emergency first. So, mm -hmm. but, but again, we are trying to address a lot of that issue. I think, for instance, now what we are trying to do is get the common cases, surgical cases, to be addressed in some general hospitals that have free treatment space. So, okay. I will say yes and no. Mm -hmm. But the reason being that the huge, the huge load on the doctors and nurses is a major problem. Again, I will not rule out the possibility of. Uh, I mean, so, so. Let, let me take this on, which 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 I'm sure the Lagos public would want me to ask you. We've had, in the past few years, I don't think it has happened very, very recently, but we've had a, a fairly a preponderance of strikes, doctors on strike, crisis between the doctors and the state government, and, and at a point, even some of us were worried that what was going on. Now, you give us a, what, what factors were behind those strikes, and have those factors been resolved? Now? Let me... I talk generally. Mm. The health sector is a very peculiar sector mm. because you have many stakeholders mm. and each one trying to defend his or her own. Person. So it's a sector that is ripe for, I mean, that's full of conflicts. Mm. So you are constantly trying to resolve conflicts. Okay. Have we said that? Our system, I must say, I will admit again that I'm looking at it from the national point of view now because mm. a lot of problems that states are having that are major reasons for these strike actions. To me, I believe it has to be addressed at the national level. Hmm. Because if you look at the, the, the revenue according to the, the, the federal government, yeah. and what proportion that comes to the states, you yeah. know, there is a mismatch there. And the problems are actually with the states and local governments. Hmm. And Lagos has a peculiarity because we have a huge population itself. Now, if policies are taken, and state governments are not part of that policy, hmm. and you say we are running a federal, a federal then system. we are joking. because. Hmm. What the federal government can pay, a state government may not necessarily be able to pay. So mm -hmm. I, I must admit again, whether I would like it or not, in this country, the health worker is not appropriately paid. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a reflection of the economy. And the so, and so, and.